Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review, The Bullseye by JS Surfboards. Now I've got two stock 5.5 boards. They're coming in at 25.1 liters. I have an epoxy in what JS is calling the hi-fi construction, and then I have it in the PU Poly. Now both these boards are straight off the rack, and this is gonna be a really fun review, so sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now as we dive into the bullseye, I wanna say first that it has a big brother, and it's called the Raging Bull. Both these boards were a collaboration for Mark Ocalupo. And with him not being on tour anymore, I feel it's very relevant for us in our community today on what Aki's riding. It's kind of like that step down performance board, right? Now they're saying the bullseye is more of that one to five foot. You can see wide point front from center. It's got low rocker. We'll look at that in a minute, but all the foam shoved forward, right? With that wide point being front from center, it's going to draw out my turns and want to carve a bit. Now that low rocker makes it a good paddler. It also has that, it's designed to have that quick get up and go speed. Now, if you see, it's got a round tail. And what I like about those round tails is a hold speed through turns and that's called drive. So I did get the Raging Bull in a 5.8. This is also a stock board. Now I've ridden this in like maybe head high, a little bit bigger. And I felt like this board has a lot more hold compared to this one. So if I'm riding the, the bullseye in one to five foot surf, the Raging Bull is probably going to be more in that four to eight foot surf here in Southern Cal. I kind of feel like this might be a little bit too much board for the point breaks. So for me to do a review on the Raging Bull, we might do a little bit of the point breaks, but we're probably going to have to get into some beach breaks where there's more power and a little bit more curve for this board to really shine. But back to the bullseye. When I talk about the round tail, both of them have that. They're kind of pulled in, so it's offering good performance in the pocket. And because it's pulled in a little bit, I also feel like it's got good drive through my turns. Now, I mentioned there being a lot of foam in the wide point front from center, so everything shoved forward. I wanted to show you how low the rocker is, right? You can see it's still foiled out nice, board paddles really well, and it's foiled out back here. So I can sink the rail and keep this board on rail and getting a lot of performance out of it. But one of the things I wanted to mention is that I'm five foot nine and 160 pounds. And this board comes in at 25.1 liters. This is PU Poly and it's on the low side for my, um, my range. So I talk about being 160 and it just depends on the day. I could be 158 or I could be 164. But this is probably the lowest I'd wanna go on a board like this. But if the board's paddling well, I wanna take advantage of its performance. And with that low rocker, I'm expecting it to have that quick get up and go speed in one to two foot surf if the range on the JS website says one to five feet. Now I started with this board as a thruster. And when I, when I started to paddle into waves, it didn't have that quick get up and go speed like I was hoping in like chest high and below. Now there's a couple things that I think that I liked about it and I talked about the tail being pulled in and it having a round tail, and I talked about driving through my turns. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about is that I like to surf more top to bottom and be as vertical as possible. And a round tail really offers more of a round type surfing, right? So it, I can get it vertical, but I have to work a little bit harder. So I have to do maybe a, a longer bottom turn to come up and get square. Now, in one to two foot surf, it's a little bit harder than if I'm surfing three to five foot waves. But one of the things I noticed about this round tail and other boards that are built similar with that round tail is they offer such good hold, I feel like I can push them in bigger surf. So this board started to come alive in like head high to maybe like even a foot overhead, which kind of blew my mind a little bit because I'm expecting it to be more of a groveler. Now, one of the things that I want to mention is that a round tail it can be hard to get it to release at the peak of a turn for me. Now, I did get the, the tail above the lip and then it can slide and do its thing. But for me, starting with as a thruster in one to two foot surf, it didn't have that quick get up and go speed. It didn't have that X factor speed wise down the line. It did have good drive through turns and good hold off the bottom. Now I wanna talk about fins and the wow factor from chest high and below. How did I get this board to give me that quick get up and go speed, I started messing with fins. Since I got the PU Poly, I went from thruster, I thought, okay, 
how would this board go with a twin plus trailer? So I started with the Almeric twins. And the reason I started with these is because they're so upright. I still want a quick pivot. I'm still looking to give me that down the line speed and I want to offset that round tail. Because it has good hold, I'm going to get that release I'm looking for at the peak of a turn with the smaller trailer fin. And you can see it still has decent fin depth that's in the water, so I'm going to have good hold and be able to pivot off it, but now I've got good speed, right? Now the next thing I, I thought, okay, I like quads a lot. I took the reactors, this is the large side fin, pulled out the center thruster fin, and I put in the medium quad rears. So we got real pivotal fins. I'm getting that speed right off the bat. So I felt like I've adjusted the fins and I've got my down, quick get up and go down the line speed. And on the quad, because it has no center fin, that little gap from the two quad rears, that's gonna offer a little bit of release right at the peak of a turn and keep those small waves really fun and the boards nice and playful. Now for you guys that are futures, you can get the Almeric Twin in Honeycomb exactly the same, right? And then the closest thing that I've experienced for the reactors is the Legacy P8. This is a large pivot fin, right? And then to couple that with the P8s, I'd go with the Hayden Shape Quad Rears. This is like a medium large, similar fin foil on the inside. They're both 80-20, so it's real smooth. And if I had my um, choice to ride this particular board in one of these three setups, I'd go quad. Quad was the smoothest rail to rail and it held good speed. Now, the other thing I thought about is what else could I do? So I called up to the folks at JS, told them straight up, hey, it's not going that great speed wise in one to two foot serve. You have it in hi fi. Maybe that twang or pop and projection that an EPS offers. Maybe that'll solve the problem. So I took the reactors, they sent down another 5.5 stock, and I put the reactor quad set. I rode this board two times, and it had it right off the bat. So I think what's best is for you guys that are PU, poly, you don't like EPSs, get this board and go straight into these types of fin setups if you're buying this board to fit the one to five foot range. For me, since I love um, epoxies and EPS boards, I'd go here and I wouldn't go here at all. This board offers great pop and because it's a tad lighter, I felt like I can get to my feet and get the board where I want faster and get that pop and projection through turns. And I put some waves together for you guys to look at so you can see the differences. So let's compare the EPS and the PU. This is a quad, nice projection floater right there. Just staying right in the pocket rail to rail, good flow, nothing super exciting, but it's a really small wave. Here's the PU, nice bottom turn. This is a twin plus trailer, watch the release. That felt good too. There's the EPS, watch the pop in the turn right there. Now on the PU, it's looking lively, but I just felt like the EPS had more pop. So let's look at some waves together. This wave's well overhead. Glad I had the PU poly on this particular wave. It's settling down nice. Watch the first turn, big spray, excellent hold right there. Now the wave's starting to run away and the board's projecting really well. Now on this little left right here, you can see I'm adjusting my feet. Watch the board, nice release right into a bottom turn. Here's the release again and that's what I want on a quad. I like that board feeling playful. Now this is a really high tide day right here. You can see a little backwash right there. I still have good control and the board's throwing a lot of spray on every turn. This little left, bottom turn, top turn. You can see it has a little extra pop in the hi-fi construction, able to finish it well. Now I wanna talk about the construction durability. I haven't talked about this in a while, but I'm actually really shocked. I rode this PU Poly for roughly a week and a half. So that's seven, eight days, roughly two to three hours per session. A PU poly would be pretty beat and hammered in with pressure dents for me. I'm hard on boards. And on the hi-fi construction, I rode it two times. Taking the wax off both boards, 
the PU Poly is in better shape. Like I said, hardly any pressure dents at all. Now I'm not picking on the Hi-Fi construction. This is what they all look like. So they're all about the same. Construction, durability wise, the dents are normal over here. What I'm really doing is I'm hats off to the foam and JS on this particular PU Poly stock board. I didn't order this custom. They never knew I was gonna get this board for the review. My point is, is there's good foam out there, so I emailed them, who is making the foam? And they said, Buford Blanks. On top of, you know, they're trying to up their game with craftsmanship at JS, and they did it. And I didn't just notice it on this board. In the last couple years that I've been doing reviews, I keep talking about the PU Poly by G JS having a lot less pressure dents. You guys that like a PU Poly, this is next level right here. And for all the other foam companies out there, these guys at Buford are doing it right. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Bullseye. I highly recommend it for intermediate all the way to pro level surfers, and I'm calling it a daily driver. I like it best in the chest high to even a little bit overhead. Now if I'm buying it for maybe the one foot to five foot and real focused on the smaller end range, I'm going with the hi-fi construction. I like that little extra pop that you get out of an EPS. Now special shout out thanks to JS for sending these boards down for review. Hey, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfandshow.com. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.